Hi. It is very relieving when you realize uh, that uh, all stories, uh, even those that are really, really touch you, are uh, <coughs> extremely simple and uh, actually not of much interest, actually, but uh, what makes them magic is how they are told. And uh, it's actually so simple that uh, it was written pretty <coughs> clearly how to write a script from an old Greek Aristoteles for thousand years ago. Uh, he puts up uh, how to tell the story and uh, puts up also uh, how to formulate it. And uh, pretty much all good stories are told in this way. So you have a very simple task, task ahead of you to create an interesting story. Aristoteles um, showed uh, with the formula of 30-60-30. Uh, I mean, introduction first, like uh, 30 minutes in the, in the script. Sit, sit field uh, says uh, actually 24 minutes. Those arguments don't really matter, but uh, the first third of the uh, story has to be an introduction of uh, circumstances, introduction of the world and the rules that um, apply to this, to this world. Because uh, you can have whatever world where whatever rules are, even some rules that are absurd, but you have to introduce them in the first third of the movie or story that you are telling. And after that you can break those rules, but the rules can be as absurd as you want them to be. And uh, then it's the middle, mm -hmm. as people say, where the main story happens. And then it's the closure, the last third of the story where you bind things up and uh, sort of uh, give the last kiss of the people that got together or, or um, give people the breathing, breathing space. It is uh, the magic of a story, whatever story it is, is to realize that actually nothing <laughs> or no, no point in a story, or, or no story is actually of any interest. I mean, it's how you tell a story. And, uh, I mean, people fall in love, not interesting. People die or get born, not interesting at all. It happens to everybody, and if it hasn't happened yet, it will happen. What is interesting is how you tell a story. And uh, that's where the magic is, is to create an interest and a compassion with the characters that are in the story. One uh, author of uh, some book of how to tell a story uh, wrote that uh, Actually, all stories can be compiled in one sentence. Every story that you have heard of in this story. And it is, it is the story of, uh, every story is a story about somebody wants or needs something very badly and is having a hard time getting it. It uh, has to be a need and a want in the story. Otherwise, uh, you have no need or want to see the story. In the most simple, uh, most simple stories, it's like you know who done the crime, who who did this or, or what, and you have to see it through to see who did what. Then uh, it's a hard thing because those films can be very boring. Is uh, if you can create the compassion with the character. Sometimes, I mean, in the lousiest dramas or crime stories, 
you don't feel the compassion, but still you you have the urge to uh, know who did the crime or whatever. But if you can combine uh, drama or love story or or uh, whatever story you're telling with compassion with the characters, it uh, can turn into a magic. There are many theories, theories about uh, how you create the compassion with the characters. <laughs> because uh, if you uh, know those theories, I mean, quite majority of the films use those tricks to build up uh, uh, compassion among the audience. We are very simple creatures, humans. We uh, feel compassion with with uh, things that actually are uniting us, and uh, we know, for instance, uh, Christoph Faulkner, he, um, he studied a lot uh, mythology. Why people create so similar mythologies in different parts of the world. And uh, they have items that uh, unite us and uh, they have items that uh, are similar, even though they are made in uh, parts of the world where humans live that have never reached or heard uh, those humans that made similar stories uh, in other parts of the world. So what is... Uh, well, I'm explaining a few sentences, uh, piles of books that he wrote about this. So excuse my... Uh, Simplifying of uh, what he was saying, but he uh, well, well, one of his books was uh, a hero with thousand faces, because he said actually almost all of the heroes have things that uh, are always the same in all hero stories, and uh, those things are used again and again in uh, thrillers in Hollywood and uh, and uh, well in every movie making in the world and story them. You know, I'm just telling you basic things in the storytelling. You can break all, what I, all the rules that I, I'm talking about. But in the end, I mean, it's, it always ends up in a story pretty close to our students. But Christoph Vogler, who said, who wrote, among other, uh, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, said that, uh, for us normal humans, us who make up the majority of societies, us who are not like you know, kings or like you know, most powerful persons, we do feel much more for people that uh, that are not loving fights, who are not like you know jumping into every quarrel. And, uh, and uh, Christoph Vogler said that. For a hero to get compassion among the audience, it is much better that uh, he is forced into a situation, but doesn't jump into it free willingly. So you see that uh, when you, when storytellers are creating a hero that gets a compassion from the audience, it is much more likely that we feel the compassion when it is. Uh, he doesn't want to take part in the fight, but he's pushed to do it. Actually, Star Wars, the breakthrough of Star Wars and the first Star Wars movie game was the script. And uh, the director has always admitted that he read the Christoph Vogler books and he created the Star Wars story from that theory. And uh, the hero in Star Wars is actually doesn't want to take part in that fight, but is forced to when his family is killed and uh, the village is destroyed, so he has to. And uh, <clears throat> what is also important when you're creating a hero is that he, as we all would consider, he is always wanting to bail out. So it's also good to, when you're creating a hero is to Finish all other possibilities. That before he goes into the fight, he he first considers trying to run, and then in the story you 
make that impossible. He tries to somehow get out of the situation. So he, the situation always just forces him the way where, where you want him to go. This was Christopher Walsh. <coughs> but um, he, as he was studying all the methodologies, uh, also realized, just like everyone else who has tried to tell a story, that actually Aristotle had it all in the beginning. Back to where I started was, uh, I'm going to show you here two or three moments that we have short films. As all stories, those stories are actually of no interest. You can actually uh, describe those stories in one sentence. But that exactly by doing that, you kill the story. What is of interest? in those stories that I'm gonna show you, is how they are told and how slowly and carefully the small story is exposed. There is no take in uh, those sorts of stories and in your films, no shot in the film should be without pushing the story forward and having have a meaning. Every shot should have the purpose of telling a bit more, pushing the story forward. All other shots are a waste of time. And amateurs, even though you win your thought that might be beautiful or something. It has to push the story forward and have some purpose of either like the introduction, telling what, uh, what the area is, what the circumstances is, or in the main part, where the actual story is, or in the end, where you Wrap up. Yes. Can I ask a question? Yes, you yes. Say, you know, I'm just trying to sum this up. So you were saying that every scene or every shot has yeah. to have a purpose of yeah. pushing forward the story. Yeah. yeah. Every shot, every scene. Both. Everything, all the rules that I'm telling you have been broken with success. It's a generalization, which is like, you know, like all rules. A generalization that uh, can be broken, of course. But in most cases, like uh, you see uh, films like, you now I think about the Tarantino movie, Bruce Willis, what's the name of the movie? Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. It looks like he's breaking up uh, the theory of Aristotle. Mm -hmm. I mean, he starts uh, with an end scene and uh, he hasn't introduced characters when he's already dead and uh, then the story comes later. But when you wrap it up, it is Aristotle, totally from the beginning to the end. He's just putting a and scene in the beginning, and the beginning scene in the middle, and it's, it's absolutely a the third of the movie uh, is an uh, introduction of characters and the circumstances, then it's the middle thing, and then it's a wrap-up. He just throws it around. Then, <coughs> let's look at those very uninteresting stories who are told in an interesting way. That's something about it. It was nominated for the Oscar. It's a, a, a short story. He uh, is a good uh, director. And it's taken in Iceland. And uh, it is actually very influenced by... Why was it short? Sorry. 
Yeah. Maybe it's mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, the one you shot with Sonny. Oh, maybe it's the Yeah. It's on the way. So, I have to leave out. It's a very small story. But uh, every shot is oh, okay. moving a bit more info for the, for the audience. Everything has purpose. I mean, uh, the sweat, the worn out. I mean, everything in every shot should have a point and tell a story that supports, or tell things that support your story. Slowly we we get to know the character. You can kill every story of interest by telling it in one sentence. I mean, <clears throat> if a child of mine was born, I can tell it that it's of no interest for you in this one sentence. But if I tell it in an interesting way, it can move your hearts and you can really get thrilled by it. In a few shots, uh, we learn a lot about this character. We learn first, of course, showing where he lives. He's worn out, he's a hardworking man, but he doesn't answer the phone. And it lights up. It doesn't answer the phone, because we all live in a world that if a phone rings, we answer it. It's something that we all do. Even in a lecture, I mean, the phone would ring and I would like to answer it. <laughs> so it starts a curiosity thing for us. Nordvestan Fjóris, Skia, Hiti 3 Stig, Sjávarhiti 2,7. Loftristingur, Klukka 9, Amasali, 995 millibur, Sporsvísund, 1000 stigandi, og Janmaginn, 989 stigandi. Mest frosti. The house is very open, so it moves into the nature. Hamrar. Já, sælunir minn. Ég hélt að þú hefðu nú fengið betra uppeld eins og að og verður að hringja á matmórstímum. Já, það er vestan átt. Hann snýr sér í nótt. Já, hann Jón kemur með vörur og pósta morgun. Já, hann. Ég held að elli hæ elli breytist nú ekki mikið þó maður skoða einhvern bækling. Nei, hún lagði sig eftir matinn. Maður þarf nú ekki að vera slappur þó maður vilji leggja sig. Jú, hún er bara verið miklu hressari upp og síkastið. Bara eldress. Já, það er veitt og annars sem maður þarf að gera að þurfum við förum. Já, þið er á því fílinja minn. En ég vildi helst að því kemur ekki fyrir hann eftir helgi. Heyrðu, er hún byrta lítt að nokkuð að þetta einhvers staðar? Það er ekki að það er 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 að
that the character has a aim, often described as a need or a want. That, uh, that in every story, if there's a car character that you're supposed to have a compassion for, or a feel for, he has to have some kind of aim. It can be as simple as, I need a glass of water, and I want to get that. And the story could be that it's a barrier for me to getting my glass of water. But if I have this want to get the glass of water, then already there is a possibility for audience to feel for me and feel some compassion. He already stated uh, some want there, by saying that he wants the woman to come after the weekend, and not right away means that he has some aim, although we don't know why he has this aim. It's also important how the camera moves. I mean, the director could have shot this scene in 35 takes, but uh, it's one take. It matters in uh, storytelling how the camera moves. that uh, he doesn't want his daughter to come right away. He has some aim that he wants to do something before his daughter comes for a visit. And then we see a car and him getting frightened that uh, his daughter is coming. It's something that's used a lot in thrillers. It's like, you know, in built up expectations. It's also used a lot in dramas. Built expectations that uh, somebody is uh, afraid of uh, some enemy coming and uh, it's a false alarm. 
it builds up uh, excitement and it's used a lot in the drama too because this is not his daughter so he can still try to build up for his aim. Haraldur lítt lesa veðrið. Já, já. Þetta er í síðasta sinn sem ég kemur póst og vörur til ykkar gróu. Hvað er verið að smíða hlera fyrir glöggana? Öllum ánum nærp gefa. Ég var sjálfur að endurbúa hjá mér fyrir veturinn. Búin að negla fyrir alla glugga út í húsunum og ná síðustu tveimur eftirlegu kindunum. Og þær sem hélda að þeirra sloppið við sláttrúsið. Já. Þetta er nú meiri lúksusinn sem þið gróir eða flytti. Það byrjaði það fyrir smá veis. Það er mikið öryggi fyrir ykkur að flytja þangað það sem einhver er alltaf til staðar. Þú vildir ekki koma þessu brefi póst til hennar Lillju minnur. Ekki málið. Best ekki fyrir helgi. Jú, 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 það er efst alveg. Heyrðu, þetta er að grófa ekki heitt á könninni. Ha? Þetta er að grófa ekki kaffi á könninni. Kaffi? Já, það er nú það. Nei, þú skal segja þér ég. Ég má ekkert ræði að þamba kaffi núna. Hva, tíu dropa? Nei, og hún grófa, hún lagði sig. Nú. Hvenær komið til afa og ömmu? Rétt bráðum, elskan. Hvenær bráðu? Bara eftir svona klukkutíma. Viltu eitthvað að drekka, skan? Það er það, ég er svona að hringi mömmu og pappa. Láta þau vita því sem að koma, ég meina, hann. Þetta getur verið GSM samband en ekki búin. Mamma verður alveg miðu sín ef við byrtumst bara allt í einu. En ég held að pappi verður bara feginn að fá okkur til þess að hjálpa honum að pakka.
Simple story. Uh, <clears throat> what dramas, thrillers, and comedies and love stories and everything uh, have often in common is like you now it's the uh, same film most of the time. There it is important because I mean it's just a story of a guy who wants to kill himself. It's not an interesting story. People are killing themselves all over the world all the time. But uh, you try to, or he tries to, build excitement. Important in the excitement is that the character that the director or the storyteller is trying to build up sympathy with has a aim. He wants to do something. Even if it was simple as me getting a cup of coffee, I have the aim. And if I fulfill the aim right away, it's not interesting. But if I Build up barriers between this, like in this story, that guy wants to kill himself. And uh, he doesn't want the daughter to come and interrupt him. There you build up some barriers. It starts to be uh, something that he has to finish, and he starts to like, you know, feel like there is something that can interrupt him in his aim. You also get compassion slowly by realizing that he's lying in the beginning when he's talking about that his wife has it great. So slowly it's revealed that his wife has died already. And he also can relate to feelings like that if it's shown to us in a compassionate way. And he obviously loves 
or loves his wife. He's like, you know, showing his compassion and his love, even though she already has died. Those are all important elements in building up the compassion for characters and building up for a story that could work. Because in the end, you, you can't please all the people never, ever. <clears throat> but to get to a wider audience or to more people than just yourself and your girlfriend or your boyfriend, then you have to <clears throat> follow some of the rules and, or at least try to build up compassion for the, for the characters in your story. Because no story is of interest at all, except to yourself. <laughs>